In this video, I'll show you how to create a client with RimObjects SDK for Java for the Mega Server demo server. I'm running the Mega Server demo server compiled with RimObjects SDK for .NET, and because of fabulous wire compatibility, this could be the Mega Server demo server built with Delphi or .NET. It doesn't matter. And what I have also here is this is the RODL file that was used with that server. It comes with the server. The RODL file describes the service that the server publishes so that we can create a client that runs against it. So to get started, I need to go into my IDE. In this case, I'm using IntelliJ IDEA from JetBrains. Of course, I could be using any Java IDE, but this is the one I use for this demo. So we'll go ahead and go to new project here, and we're gonna create a new project and give it a name and there we go we've got our simple empty project set up here now for starters there's no source code in here I need the source code that tells my client application how to talk to the server to get that I go to the RODL file here and open this in Service Builder now Service Builder is the tool that you use to build and design your service as well as uh, possibly update it, make changes. And it opens the RODL file here, which describes our service. So this lists all the operations our service supports, as well as any types the service has, and some exceptions we've defined in order to have robust error handling here. So I'm not gonna make any changes to this because this is the RODL file that was used to define the server. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to CodeGen here. And these are all the different um, languages that we can support through CodeGen. So for building a server, we probably use C Sharp or Visual Basic or uh, Oxygen for .NET in order to build the server. But we're building the client now, and so we need to go to Java. We're gonna use the Java language to build a Java client. So now it's built the code that we need in order to interface with that server. So we should need to give it a package name here, which is the same name we're using before, and we say save. And I'm just gonna save it in the source code folder that we just created and we're done with Service Builder. So now we go back into our IDE and we see that it's updated here and it lists all of our source code that was just generated for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a package here to hold all this in here. Let's put all those files in the package. Yes, now even though I have the source code in here, it won't build and the reason it will build is because we don't have a reference to our Rem objects SDK for Java jar file. So in order to do that, we need to come in here to file project structure and go to modules, or I'm sorry, libraries, and say add. And we just put the path in here to our Java jar file and it opens up. It's a great thing about it being a pure Java jar file, no dependencies, it just works in any IDE you want to use it from. So now we go to external libraries. We see we have a reference to the JDK and our RimObjects SDK Java file. So now our project will build, but it won't do anything. So we see down here at the bottom it says uh, compilation completed successfully. So let's go ahead and add a little functional code in here to make it do something. So we're going to add a Java class and we're going to call it console app. So we have an empty class at this point. So we need to define our entry point here for application. So we're going to use the standard Java entry point. And now we need to tell our application how to talk to the server. And that's accomplished through a URL that points to the server. And we store that in a URI here. So our server is local here, so we're using localhost. And you see that underline there. That underline is the IDE's way of telling us that that could possibly raise an exception. Now, Java requires that if some exception is going to be raised, you either handle it or declare that you could possibly be raising it. So we're gonna go ahead and just say that we might possibly raise it. So basically we're saying that if that URI was mis was not formed correctly, then we could raise an exception for that. So we're ready to go, and we're gonna go ahead and create an instance of our mega server proxy here. Now, this mega demo server proxy is the local object that exposes all of the operations from the server. And by calling these local operations here, which we can see here by going to their service, you can see here's a list of all the possible um, methods we could call here. Each method maps to a service like we saw in the service builder. And then by calling one of these, we then evoke 
that method on the server automatically. And we treat it like a local object, which is really the cool thing about a Rim Objects SDK. So let's go ahead and call sum here. And we'll pass the two required parameters and we'll display the output that we want to have. We'll get back from that. So at that point, we're done. This will build and we, in order to run it, we need to tell the ID how to run it. So we're gonna go in here and create a new configuration for an application. And we need to tell it what our main class is. And there's only one possibility right now, so we'll just select that one. And we're ready to go to run our application. And we see that the answer is 42. So there you go, not much to it. Very easy to build a client with Brim Objects SDK for Java to talk to the mega demo server. Um, it's exactly the same code that you would use if you're talking to your own custom server here. Of course, you'd just be calling the uh, different operations. But that's all there is to it to get started with building your clients for Rim Objects SDK for Java.